A good morning to you and welcome to Bright Republic right here on Bright 98.7. Six minutes gone past the hour of eight o'clock. My name is Smir Sadi and of course, uh, thank you to the me and you family life for actually giving us that uh, introduction. And of course, we're here to discuss national issues, so talk politics as well as other developments uh, in the nation. Uh, this is Bright Republic and it airs every weekday, Mondays through Fridays at uh, eight o'clock except wednesdays uh, when we come on board at nine o'clock and of course today on bright republic we'll be doing this together as uh uh, you know, we're expecting some guests uh, shortly or later on uh, during the course of the show. And of course, let's start uh, the today's headline with the drama that did ensue uh, a plenary yesterday uh, where we saw Okorocha daring Ahmed Lawan. And this one is actually called from the Guardian newspaper. And the Guardian reports drama as Okorocha dares Lawan a plenary a drama as Okorucha dares Lawan a plenary and now to the details in my drama yesterday played out on the floor of the upper legislative chamber when the senate president Ahmed Lawan sweet off the public address system attached to senator Ruchas Okorucha who is actually representing APC Emo West uh, during screening of ministerial uh, nominees yesterday uh, Lawan's action followed an attempt by Okorucha to interrogate one of the ministerial nominees, uh, Good Luck Nana Opia, uh, who uh, is representing Imo State. And in an ensuing shouting march, the Imo ex governor demanded to know why Lawan gave another lawmaker, Francis Onyewuchi Ezenwa, a chance to speak when he was denied the opportunity to ask Nana Opia a uh, question or interrogate him uh, during the ministerial screening. And countering Okorucha's appeal to question the nominee, the Senate president cautioned him against breaching the agreement read in the chamber's closed-door session. And shortly after his screening, Opia actually told journalists that there was no bad blood between him and the senator, insisting, however, that the ex-governor meant well. And uh, Opia was former Speaker of Imo State House of Assembly and also a member representing Oaji Egbema, Oguta and Oru West Federal Constituency in the House of Reps. He is currently Commissioner for Petroleum Resources uh, in Emo State. You know, a lot of questions have been asked, uh, you know, raised since this drama ensued a plenary yesterday when Ahmed Lawan indeed turned off the mic of uh, Rocha Sukorucha when he was about uh, fielding some questions to Nana Opia who is one of the persons whose name was submitted by the president a few weeks ago uh, to the legislative chamber, upper legislative chamber, for screening and, of course, confirming of their ministerial uh, you know, nomination by the president. And for those who do not really know uh, the drama that has been on between Okorocha and Opia, for those who know Nana, good luck Nana Opia, uh, you will definitely know that he is a very vocal man and he has been very, very vocal about, uh, you know, the senator and the former governor of uh, Imo State talking about Rucha Sokorucha. And a lot of uh, people actually said, uh, possibly this is why uh, Okorucha needed and wanted to ask Nana Opia a question uh, during the screening. And the special advisor and coordinator for oil and gas to uh, the governor of Imo State, Hopu Zodima, uh, good luck, Opia. Some time ago, I think I remember sometime in 2020, uh, you know, Nana Opia made a statement about the former governor of uh, Imo State talking about uh, Ruchas Okorucha. And I remember vividly uh, when uh, good luck, Nana Opia actually made a critical statement. According to Nana Opia, he said that the people of Imo, he made this statement in 2020 that the people of Imo State elected a disaster after former governor uh, ikd or akim as the governor of the state in 2011 and of course we know who he was referring to and this was the time uh you know the former governor uh, talking about rucha sokorucha was in power in emo state and nanopia has been very critical of Okorucha and no wonder Okorucha wanted to ask him a question but uh, looking at akman lawan turning off the mic of 
uh, Rucha Zukurucha. Uh, this is because of the statement made by uh, Ahmed Lawan. Possibly they had had an indoor meeting uh, prior to the screening of the minister and nominees, and they've been asked not to put the sudden question forward. And of course, uh, you know, Ahmed Lawan had to remind Okorucha uh, to remember what they discussed uh, indoor prior to the screening. And no one knows uh, what they discussed and what Ahmed Lawan could have told Okorucha prior to the ministerial uh, screening yesterday but it was drama and it was fun for some people to see uh how ahmed lawan actually shot off the mic of okorucha and not allowing him to ask questions despite the rancor and drama that ensued during the process anyway uh, it is no longer news uh, that uh, uh, the Senate have actually screened, uh, you know, the seven nominees of the president for the ministerial position. Uh, we all know that so far, uh, certain individuals were actually nominated by the president uh, for screening. Uh, we saw, and now the Senate have actually confirmed uh, this person's, uh, and they've been screened and they've been confirmed. Uh, part of those screened and confirmed yesterday, uh, Iko Ikechuku, who is from Abia state uh umana umana from aquarium state was also screened and nominated and confirmed yesterday we saw a kuman kama and kama uh, from airborne state also uh screened and confirmed uh we have omar el yakub from kano state ademola adeguruye from ondo state as well as his river state counterpart odum udi was also uh, screened and nominated and confirmed yesterday by the senators and away from that particular development Let's move on to another that is on the headlines this morning. And uh, still, uh, this one is on the House of Reps. Uh, the Reps are currently probing the five-year full subsidy and uh, they are alleging 2.9 trillion naira diversion. Uh, this is called from Daily Trust newspaper. And on Daily Trust, the headline says, Reps probe five-year full subsidy, alleged 2.9 trillion naira diversion. The House of Reps has set up an ad hoc committee to investigate the petroleum product subsidy regime from 2017 to 2021 as it allayed $7 billion, which amounts to about 2.9 trillion naira oil proceeds diversion. This followed the adoption of the motion by Reps uh, uh, Sergius Ose Ogun, Ogun, who in a motion said subsidy has been used by the NNPC Limited and other stakeholders to subvert the nation's crude oil revenue of over $10 billion. Uh, he said records show that as of 2021, over $7 billion in over 120 million barrels of oil had been diverted. Uh, he expressed worry that component cost in the petroleum product subsidy value chain claimed by the NNPC Limited were highly overbloated while the transfer pump price per liter used by the NNPC Limited in relation to the PPMC is underquoted as 123 to 128 Naira uh, instead of 162 to 165 Naira. And the lawmaker also said this uh, under reporting of 37 to 39 Naira per liter translates into over 70 billion Naira uh, a month or 840 billion Naira a year. And the Speaker of the House, Femi Bajabi Miller, while ruling on the motion, said subsidy regime has been a theme of concern. And he also directed the Deputy Speaker of the House, the House Leader and the Chief Whip to come up with a crack team that would probe the subsidy regime while the committee has eight weeks to revert. You know, the issue of first subsidy and this first subsidy regime has been... Uh, a thing of concern not only for lawmakers but also for Nigerians as uh, there are speculations and reports that uh, possibly the NNPC Limited uh, have actually done a lot you, you know there's a case of issue and allegations of diversion by the NNPC Limited since the uh, false subsidy regime and of course this uh, rep talking about rep surges have actually alleged that uh, about 2.9 trillion uh, Naira from all proceeds have so far been diverted by uh, the NNPC Limited during uh, this five-year term. We're talking about from 2017 to 2021, in which uh, he has asked that uh, a probe should be done to ensure that this money is uh, being answered for.
and however npc limited would have done in you know diverting or over bloating certain costs or uh dropping certain costs they should be held accountable and answerable for this particular issue anyway tim Topper legushi is here good morning tim Topper. good morning to you sir. okay now let's talk about uh you know the full subsidy regime and uh, i remember asking that there should be a probe on this Okay, um, Simeon, for a while now, it seems like there's um, back and forth with this um, issue of subsidy. But one thing we've said on this platform is who we'll actually check on the activities of the NMPC and stakeholders involved when it comes to um, um, petrol, um, diesel, and all of that. Because it's looking like until we feel that there is a problem, that is when we begin to address all of this issue. I feel that we would not have gotten here that amount of money they are considering that was actually... Um, would I say diverted or, so, or, or, or sort of. So I feel that if we had people that check and balance all of the activities of the NMPC and stakeholders involved when it comes to oil, I feel that we will not have all of these amounts ringing in our ears uh, um, each and every time. Okay, for the subsidy, I feel it's even before even before now we've been hearing of um, have they um, actually removed subsidies? Their subsidy is Nigeria still paying for subsidy, and it feels like we've not actually gotten the correct answers to all of these questions nigeria have been asked of course we're we still, still paying subsidy <laughs> It, but, but, but when you look at it, it feels, it feels otherwise. It's feeling that um, the fuel is not actually subsidized. We are just we are actually paying for it in full because we know how it started from 65 naira, I feel, to 85. Now we are at 165. So I feel that if we had people on ground already, that is check balancing what NMPC is doing. That is checking on the activities of NMPC. That is asking questions that why is this done like this? Giving estimate, giving calculation. I feel will not be at this point. I feel that is when there is a problem. That's why when we see the um, House of Assembly or, um, or, or House of Rep, rather. That's when we see them working. That's when they begin to probe. When the thing is almost like far from being repaired, that's when we see them working. So I feel they should do better. It's not when they sense that there is a problem, that they should be active or they should be moving motion. Even before now, they should have been doing something about it. So I feel, for me, I, 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 even as much as it's... Um, it's a commendable effort. They want to begin to probe. I feel that this should have started a long time ago, not even now. That's it for me. So Okay, anyway, it's time for us to go on a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll be taking some more headlines out of talk. Of course, we'll be talking about the development with E.K. Ekurumadu as reports have it that the federal government have actually, uh, you know, put up uh, lawyers to go defend E.K. Ekurumadu. And of course, uh, we've seen uh, the House of Reps sending delegates to the U.K. We'll be giving you that development when we come back. Uh, please stay with us. 2023 election countdown has begun. The Nigerian people are highly anticipating and expectant and ready with their permanent voters' cards to elect new governors, legislators, and the president. Who will that be? Consultations are underway. Intrigues, debates, campaigns. Let's talk politics. How will the rise in the dollar price affect inflation rate, trade, manufacturing, and the market? Let's talk economy. The deliverables of democracy is the mission on target. Let's talk good governance. Opinions, analysis, and debates on Nigerian Watch with Absu Baba live every weekday, 7 p.m. on TSTV Channel 102, starting June 6, 2022. Nigeria Watch. Keeping an eye on the nation. Powered by TSTV. Connecting your world. I am here since three days ago. My corruption can happen at any day. Hey, corrupt with petrol. I prevail it with not a lot of corruption with petrol. I deceive them for hotel, I deceive them for markets. And if you see them, you go know. They say you get with them, then they embalm yourself, but me, I never go to that one place before. Let's discuss the headlines and politics. Going by the Senate standing orders of 2011 as amended, which is the genuine and authentic because it has never. And it protects. Will you shut up? Get involved. Air your opinions. She in this republic, we don't turn off your mic. Join us on Bright Republic, weekdays, 8 a.m.
Hey, welcome back to Bright Republic and two more headlines and now to Daily Trust newspaper uh, which says uh, organ investing a federal government hires lawyers for a career madu. Our Senate sends delegation to the UK. Uh, the federal government has engaged the services of lawyers to defend former Deputy Senate President E.K. Ikwiri Madu and his wife, Beatrice, of facing organ investing charge in the United Kingdom. Uh, Senate President Ahmed Lawan disclosed this on Wednesday after a closed session of the Senate. Lawan also said a delegation from the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs will depart Nigeria for London on Friday to pay a visit to the lawmaker and his wife who were arrested and charged with alleged conspiracy to arrest the organs of a child in the UK. Lawan said a briefing received by the Nigerian High Commissioner to the UK, Ishola Sharafa, showed that the Nigerian mission in London had extended consular services to Aquarium Madu and his wife including the engagement of lawyers who would defend them in court. Uh, he said the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Nyema, had been engaged for necessary diplomatic support to Aquarium Madu. So, uh, looking at this particular development, where it has been uh, said that, uh, you know, the federal government, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, have actually worked on modalities to get lawyers uh, involved in defending a current Madu in court. And, of course, uh, some delegates from the Senate uh, will also... I'll uh, be paying a visit to E.K. Kwerimadu in showing support and solidarity for him as he has been in custody for over, uh, you know, a week now at this particular time in uh, UK. So uh, looking at this, will we say uh, this is great one? The federal government are taking this very seriously. Remember a couple of days ago, uh, the senators actually said they are going to do all they can uh you know to uh you know speak to the diplomats in the uk and uh, they're going to push uh, diplomatically at uh, the eco equarium matters case they're going to do all they can to ensure that his matter has been handled diplomatically considering who he is uh in the country um even as much as we know investigation is ongoing in the uk but it's looking like when it involves one of their own they are very active they are very quick to sending in um, people to go to the united kingdom i feel that when it comes to other issues issues where we have um insecurity bedeviling the country where a sitting governor is saying that residents should carry arms we've not seen the president or the house of rep coming to sit down together and actually see what are the possible way we can actually help these people of Zamfara State. But it's involving a query Madu now, it's involving a senator. And we are seeing the um the back and forth, how active even Bajabi I mean, I think in a statement he made he was saying that he's going to call the um the British ambassador or something. We see all of that, and students are still at home. Are we saying, I just feel that um, the things that we make priority in this part are not actually priority, are not actually priority. even as much as I know that we're trying to actually prove probably uh, Ekwere Madu is innocent of the alleged, uh, what he was accused of. But I feel that there are other issues that we want to see our, the Senate, we want to see them actively involved. It's over three months or it's over four months since February 14th, students have been at home. We are not seeing how they are, how they are active, how they are, they are actually handling the situation. It, 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 it's quite worrisome that it's now involved one of their own and we are seeing that they are on and they are the forefront of it. So I feel that um, in as much as um, it's, a, um, it's a commendable one, it's a lovable one that we're seeing that um, we are out there trying to support or trying to... Um, free one of our own i feel the issues in our own country should actually we should actually pay attention to them not just because um Ekwere madu is in the united kingdom that's what i feel on the issue okay anyway a lot of reactions have actually trailed this particular report of uh uh you know the federal government actually given uh you, you know legal support to uh this person's so far uh but we'll be talking about that uh you know shortly uh, right here but anyway let's move on to another headline uh which is in the news uh right now anyway let me talk about this quickly let me start with the drama ongoing in the pdp and uh, let me call this particular headline from the guardian and it says rumpus in pdp over calls for ru's removal a weak case shabby treatment a rumpus in pdp over calls for ru's removal 
Wiki's shabby treatment. On the deck says, I remain PDP's national chairman. Are you insist? And PDP stakeholders, part of the airline still says PDP stakeholders disagree on calls for RU's resignation. And another headline says 11 governors absent from the Oshun Campaign Council's inauguration. And Tom was also quoted saying Atiku insulted Wiki by sending emissaries. Our eight months to the 2023 general elections, the center seems not to be firm in the opposition people's democratic party pdp has moves to oust its national chairman yocha you leaked yesterday and uh, even as you boasted that he remains the party's national chairman the intrigue surrounding the emergence of the party's presidential and vice presidential candidates and how the fallouts were managed have continued to put him in the eye of the storm and some members of the national executive committee yesterday disclosed that the mood in the party called for a change of leadership uh, particularly the office of the national chairman to reposition it, it and strengthen the pdp ahead of the general elections and uh, part of the scenes uh, reported scenes of your child you include is alleged mismanagement of party affairs before and after the party's presidential primary and most importantly how he managed the emergence of delta state governor ifan Okoa as running mate to atiku abubakar these are some of the uh, allegations uh you know on uh iyocha use leadership so far and looking at this uh even yesterday our uh, governor of benway state uh, samuel autumn also made a statement about the party he made a statement about Tiku Abubakar and of course uh, the emergence of uh, Okoa and how Wike has been affected by this particular decision. Now party members are calling for uh, Io Chaoyu's resignation on the grounds that he is mismanaging the party. We saw the shambolic uh, you know, appearance of the PDP at the just concluded AKT election coming closely third uh, you know, to the APC and of course the party where we saw uh, a member of the PDP affecting to and nothing has been said about this Ayo Farishe and some key members of the PDP were quiet about the AKT election so this has actually raised uh, a question mark on the capacity of Iyo Chayu being the chairman national chairman of the party to even deliver victory to the PDP in 2023 during the election a lot of party members are actually skeptical about uh you know the chances of the PDP to clinch power in 2023 and yesterday when uh, Samuel Otum, the governor of Benue State, was, was talking on a monitor television program. He talked about some of these concerns, and from his body language and everything he was saying, we could boldly hear him say, uh, right now, he doesn't even know what to say about the party. He's currently praying that whatever the spirit tells him is what he's doing. So this has raised questions of defection or not giving his total support to the party, uh, you know, as uh, the road leads to 2023. Anyway, uh, the summer autumn, while answering questions on that program, he made several statements, especially his friends, Wiki, because he made a statement say Wiki wooed him to the PDP uh, a few years ago. And now seeing how he was being treated by the national leadership of the party and even uh, the flag bearer of the party is not something welcoming for him. So this is uh, Samuel. This was what Samuel Autumn had to say about uh, that particular development. So, uh, same cause to Wiki. Uh, why can't you go to him? Uh, but you have offended him. But if Wiki is a dealer of this party. Go Governor, uh, but this, um, answer what? Uh, when, when you are not, how will you answer? Why can't they go to him? When, when people ran away from this party, Wicked was on ground. Wicked was the one that brought me to, 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 to PDP. He brought me back. Injustice was done to me in 2015. It was Wicked that came here and convinced me to come back to PDP. I came to PDP while working, and you do injustice to him, and you think he will keep quiet? I mean, I mean this is not fair. Me, I believe in justice, equity, fairness. But when you do the other ones that are wrong, it's not correct. It is not enough to say you put a call to him. It is an insult to put a call to him. You go to him. The party leadership at the national level should go to Wiki and appeal to him. Wiki is a pillar of this party. Everybody knows. Wiki 
was second to Atiku, Atiku should go to him. But it is unfair to say that you just put a call to Wiki uh, without making this. Thing. I have no problem with Okoa. Okoa is my friend. But Wiki would have been consulted. He would have been spoken to. So that we can work towards everybody must not be uh, in position now. We must not all be there. But the truth is that the truth is that uh, Wiki would have been consulted in the first place, even before the announcement was made, because, like I said, 17 people out of uh, uh, that, 14 people say that Wiki should be vice. If that was not going to work, he would have been told that, please, we can do this. Party politics is a game of compromise, we discussed. But it is wrong for anybody, and I stand to be contradicted. I, 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 I don't blame Wiki. They, 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 they are to be blamed. Those people who are in leadership should be blamed. They would have allowed a, a opportunity to Wiki to also have first-hand information. Because this is a man. Tell me one person in PDP today that have built this party to where it is today. And you, you come and just dismiss him with a wave of hand. I mean, it, 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 is, it is not right. Okay, so that was Samuel Autumn expressing his grievance uh, as to the choosing of Koa over Wiki, and he has actually called out even the national leadership of the party that they are to be blamed on this particular issue. And he made a statement, uh, you know, during that, uh, you know, interview where he said, if... Uh, uh, the uh, Atiku and the national leadership of the party knew that they wouldn't uh, stand by whatever decision. Uh, the committee, which was even edited by Samuel Otom to choose uh, a vice presidential candidate as well, uh, they should have not even set up the committee in the first place. If he had someone already in mind uh, to be his vice, why did he waste, uh, uh, you know, the time of the committee members? And we saw how it happened that 17 members were actually set up, uh, committee members, 14 out of the 17 chose Wiki, and of course the other three uh, said otherwise. But now looking at this, this has actually caused a lot of drama in the party uh we heard uh samuel autumn indirectly calling out the national leadership of the party and of course we know the party is headed by uh the national chairman your chao you and several people have been calling for his resignation on this ground on how he handled uh the okoa's emergence and how we has been treated and all of that and why uh, Atiku could not actually uh, go to Wiki and tell him that this is the decision uh, he will be making prior to his announcement of Okoa. And we also know that uh, Iyocha Yu is from Benue State and Benue is a northern part of the country. Atiku Abubakar is also from the northern part of the country. And we know that uh, based on uh, certain constitution or uh, of certain parties, you cannot have the national leadership of the party as well as the flag bearer from one region. And that was why a lot of people were hoping that since Iyocha Yu emerged as the national chairman, uh, this time we might see the presidential ticket being zoned to to, uh, the southern part, which we did not see. As some are saying, it's time for your child you to pack his bags and leave the party. Hells. Uh, we might see massive defection of individuals. Uh, from the statement of your, uh, 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 you know, Samuel Autumn, if you listen closely, you would know that at this point, looking at his body language, looking at some of the statements he made, uh, it is show that it goes to show that even Samuel Autumn doesn't trust the PDP to defeat the APC in 2023. And of course, he made a statement that at this point, when he was asked about uh, if the uh, what decision will be saying, he's saying at this point he's praying. And that he will keep praying. And whatever God tells him to do, that is what he's going to do. So this has raised questions. What is happening within the structures of the PDP? Uh, what is happening? What how are they handling the issue of uh, Wiki? Where Wiki's house has not been... Uh, so a lot of people have actually said in quotes, Wiki house is now a mecca of some sort. Where people are going to... Uh, you know, recently trooping him to pay homage to, 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 to Wiki and all of that. So how will the PDP handle this rumpus, this drama going on within the structure where even some governors are not even in support of uh, the emergence of Okoa and all of that?
I feel personally for me, all of this could have been avoided from the very beginning. If Atiku already had a candidate in mind, it was very simple. Call a meeting between Wiki and Okowa and let them know, or even the committee, that there is no need for you, for you people to actually vote. I already have a candidate in mind. Give them an explanation why you pick Okowa over Wiki. I feel that not setting up the committee and they came up with Wiki, they voted and Wiki came up on top. I had 14 votes and at the end of the day, through the ba even I know we know that he has the power to pick who will be his, uh, who is, who will be his running mate. But in as much as he, uh, for me, you're working for the party. The party is the, the party is the platform for which you're running. So I feel he holds them that explanation. Not because at the end of the day, when you look at it, why set up the committee? Are you trying to ridicule them? Why set up the committee in the first place when you already have a man? A, a man already and believe me you those uh, members in those committee they will be aggrieved also even if their candidate were not, was not picked in the first place and i feel that in as much as okay the committee came up with um, with wiki and he had okowa in mind the thing he should have done is i think he should have gone to see wiki personally because Wike is a party man. Wike is a Wike is someone that shouldn't be pushed aside in the PDP. So I feel that a conversation with Wike would have laid all of this to rest. Not saying that a phone call, if I, I like, it doesn't. We said it on this platform. Fine Face said it that it doesn't take you anything to actually take your private jet and fly to Portacot for 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 a few hours and sit down with this governor at least so that you would even understand what it, because Wike silence is 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 coming with a lot of questions. Why is Wiki silent at this time? We've seen Wiki how he's very vocal and uh, um, a lot of time. But since after the primaries and even after Okowa was picked as the running, we've not heard anything from Wiki. We don't know. And I feel the PDP at this point should actually even be scared that why is this man not saying a particular thing? Is he planning to do And obviously from the sounds of, uh, you, you know, Benue State Governor, uh, despite the drama going on in Benue State where salaries are not even being paid, uh, you can actually hear that uh, uh, Autumn is a loyalist of uh, uh, a loyalist of uh, okay. uh, of Wiki because he actually said it Wiki would him back into the party after an injustice was actually met to him uh, a couple of years ago because if you look at this thing very well it's looking like the PDP their house is not in order and if they must take power in 2023 because with the way they are going it's looking like they are not actually ready because it's looking like a lot of governors at this time or a lot of people in the PDP are actually not happy ever since the emergence of Okowa as the vice president. Look at the committee that was set up for Oshun State. Eleven governors were not present. Any explanation to as to why they were not present? And I, I feel if you start losing all of these states, you've already lost Ekiti. If you lose Oshun, it, it begins, there's a question mark on the, on, on the party already. Because you need your people to work together. If people are aggrieved, and I think uh, by now, a lot of these aggrieved members should, you should start talking, you should start reaching out to them. You start talking to them. You should start looking for how to create balance in the party. The, the 2023 election is eight months away. And look at all of this it, uh, that is already happening. People are not happy with even, I think Fire Shea said this, um, I, I think yesterday, that he is now clamoring for a Southern president, yeah, for a Southern president. So I feel a lot of things is not going well in the structures of the PDP. Yeah. And if they do not address all of this issue before, members of the party leave. I don't see them even coming close to power. And talking, about, uh, talking about the rumples in the PDP at this particular time as well, uh, we all know that, uh, you, you know, a committee has been set up uh, which is a, a campaign council, I beg your pardon, has been set up uh, by the PDP to lead, uh, you know, party members to uh, the Oshun State uh, election that is coming up uh, in about 16 days from today. Uh, the Oshun State election is on the 16th of July. Meanwhile, uh, this is a development and uh, some have actually said this could be uh, a message some of these governors are sending to the national leadership of the party, the PDP, as it is even reported that 11 of the 12 governors appointed to lead the party's campaign for the July 16 governorship election in Oshun were absent yesterday at the inauguration that was held at the party's national secretariat here in Abuja. And uh, Governor Diri, who was even supposed to be the chairman of the campaign council, was absent. Uh, the only governor in the council uh, who attended uh, this, uh, you know, inauguration was Darius Ishako of Taraba State. So imagine in a 12 governors that are part of the campaign council of uh, the PDP, leading the PDP into the Oshun State election. Uh, 12 governors are in that council. 11 were 
absent, conspicuously absent. Even the chairman of the campaign council himself uh, was also absent at the inauguration yesterday. What does this send to our party members? What does this say to the PDP? What does this mean about their chances going into the Oshun state election and also, uh, you know, the general election in 2023? For me, uh, this the message is really is a very strong one because how would you even say that 11 out of 12 governors for this committee were not present? What are their reasons for coming? I feel that most of the, most of them are probably absent because maybe they are not actually happy with the leadership of the party or they are not happy with the direction the party is going to. Because even Tambua is part of the committee. Why was Tambua not present? So if it's uh, it's it, it, there are a lot of questions. I feel that at this point the PDP should do all they can to put their house in order. That reach out to all of these governors. You have to know why these governors were not present for the committee, and you expect your party PDP to take um, to take over Oshun's um, in the coming election. So I feel it all, if all of this is not addressed before Oshun State um, governorship election, I do not see Adeleke coming up on top of his game because he needs the support of this governor. He needs the support of the committee. They need to work together so as to take over power in, because it's not feeling like um, PDP the house in, is not in order. They do. I, I, at this point, it's looking like they do not even know what they are doing. So I feel that they have to put their house in order, reach out to all of the aggrieved members, reach out to the governors of each of these states that are under the PDP, and know why they are not present, and know what is going on to their mind. Imagine 11 governors probably defecting, or some of them defecting. Uh, imagine, it, you know, a lot of governors were actually absent. Uh, Shei Makinde uh, of Ondo State wasn't even there because he was part of the council. Uh, you know, Tambowal, as we've mentioned, is also there. Uh, even Abia State Governor is vacating in Turkey with Yesom Wike. Ikpe Azu is in Turkey as he actually posted a picture. Uh, okay, Wike posted a picture of himself and uh, uh, Ikpe Azu. Imagine you were supposed to be inaugurated as one of the council, uh, campaign council members uh, going to the Australian election and uh, the governors are actually in Turkey having a, having a I, great time I'm actually time seeing so the hands of Wike in all of this. I'm actually saying because if you look at it, we have Wike's friends as governor. We have um, 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 Sheyi Makinde. Mm. We have Tambua. Tambua is also his brain. Uh, Tamil Autumn that actually granted oh, yes. the interview yesterday why was, was also part Why of was he not even... And council. he was in Abuja, I guess. So why was no, he, he was not, in his own town. Yes, and he could have uh, he could have um, traveled down to Abuja. So I've, I'm seeing the hands of um, Wike in all of this. So I feel that the PDP needs to reach out to Wike before all of this issue gets out of hand. <laughs> okay, anyway, while Ikwazu is chilling in Turkey with Wike, uh, he was supposed to be inaugurated yesterday, but uh, man was having a great time. Uh, which is, uh, you know, in quotes, what a lot of people said, uh, he supposed vice president. Uh, some of them have actually said they are not even in support of Okoa uh, emerging as the vice presidential candidate of the party in a 2023 election. And away from that, let's talk about another development in the news. And this one is called from Tribune. It says, train attack abducted passenger shot by terrorist in critical condition. Uh, this is according to the negotiator. Uh, the negotiator of the Kaduna train attack and Kaduna-based publisher Malam Tukumamu has disclosed that one of the abducted passengers, Mohammed Alamin, has been shot and fatally wounded by a terrorist guarding them in the forest. He said the shooting occurred on Monday during a friendly exchange of fire at the forest between the terrorists guarding the victims and preventing them from possible escape. Amamu had earlier facilitated the release of 11 of the victims out of the 60 passengers abducted as confirmed in an interview that Mohammed Alamin was alive but in a critical health condition. And cases of emergencies such as this, according to him, uh, require unnecessary bureaucracy. And he said he could confirm that the passenger has been shot. And Mamu had earlier said he had backed off from and the negotiating team for personal reason. However, said that uh, relations and friends of the remaining abducted train passengers in the kidnappers' den actually pleaded and begged, begged him not to. So now... My mom have actually told us one of the uh, passengers that have been shot and is in a critical condition as we speak. 
if the government are taking proactive measures to actually release all of those people, I feel that at this time we'll not be hearing such a, um, all of this information. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday, and I said it's it's the case of Ekwere Madu, and we're seeing them sending people from foreign affairs, we're seeing them sending lawyers and all of that. But the issue of um, the train um, people that we actually abduct, abducted, we've not seen um, measures actually being taken. And uh, a question keep ringing in my the person that is negotiating that. Um, um, with these terrorists that actually made um, the release of 11 um, persons, what did he do? Why are the rest not being freed? I feel these are questions that we should be asking. These are questions we need answers to. What did they give in exchange for the 11 people? Is it that the, um, the terrorists just woke up one morning and decided to release 11, peop um, 11 persons? Or what is actually going on? I feel that um, these people have actually suffered enough. These people in captivity. It's, 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 I think it's high time that an instruction should actually be given to probably the military or something that they should go into because they are in a state and we know that they are in, the, in Nigeria we know that they are in the shores of this country why haven't we wage serious war on these people and actually release these people that is actually in captivity is it until each and every one of, of them dies in captivity is that when the government would actually do more because i feel that it's actually getting out of hand look at zamfara state's government telling his people to actually carry arms we've not seen a statement we've not seen anything that they are actually going to put in place to actually stop all of this uh, um, um killing in zamfara state so and now people are still in captivity what are the government doing what measures are they doing to actually release these people because it's actually it's it's actually going to months now and these people are still in captivity i feel that the government should actually do more before each and every one of them dies in captivities okay we'll go on a quick break and when we come back we'll take uh, one or two more headlines and then open the phone lines to get your reaction stay with us Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the all-new high-definition TSTV, Africa's digital satellite television provider. With more than 100 channels covering every aspect of life, TSTV offers viewing pleasure at all times for all demographics. Catch world-class sports, music, movies, news, children's, educational, religious, documentary, reality TV channels, and so much more on TSTV. It's all in high definition. For as little as two naira, you can watch what you want, when you want, on our special bouquets, a la carte, PSU Go, and pay-per-view. Our TSTV rollout channels are available all over Nigeria and in most African countries. To be part of this viewing experience, pick up your TSTV decoders, accessories, and preloaded vouchers from our dealer shops nationwide at unbelievably affordable prices. For more information, download the TSTV app on Apple Store and Google Play Store. You can check out our website, www.tstvafrica.com, or hit us up at TSTV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or call 0990-40990. Telecom Satellite Television, TSTV, connecting your world. I am here since three days ago. Like corruption can happen at any way. Hey, corrupt with petrol. I prefer it with not a lot of corruption with petrol. I just see them for hotel, I just see them for markets. And if you see them, you go know. They say you get them, then they embalm yourself, but me, I never go to that round place before. Let's discuss the headlines and politics. Going by the Senate standing orders of 2011 as amended, which is the genuine and the authentic because it has never. And it protects. Will you shut up? Get involved. Air your opinions. She has your mind. In this republic, we don't turn off your mic. Join us on Bright Republic, weekdays, 8 a.m. One thing to work for money, and it is a totally different ball game to make your money work for you. Join Ajayi Franklin, a smart investor, real estate guru and entrepreneur par excellence as he takes you on an exciting journey on how to invest in a smart way on The Smart Investor's Guide. Every Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 98.7 Bright FM. Get your money working for you in a smart way.
Uh, this is Stu Bright, Republic, and you're welcome back. And quickly, let's uh, flip through the pages of uh, the Point newspaper and uh, talk about the headline which says, Grid Collapse, a terrorist sabotaging rehabilitation efforts, says federal government. Uh, the federal government on Wednesday said its effort to ensure steady power supply nationwide are uh, being frustrated by terrorists who are vandalizing critical power infrastructure in hard-to-reach areas, especially the northeast. The damages, it said, have hindered the transmission company of Nigeria from extending power to the affected areas. And the Minister of Power, Abubakar Liu, disclosed this to State House correspondents while briefing on the outcome of the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by the Vice President of the Presidential Villa, Abuja. And in September 2021, uh, the federal government estimated the cost of vandalized transmission equipment belonging to the TCN in Meduguri, Borno State at 1.7 billion R. And according to Aliu, the transmission infrastructure has been vandalized after every effort to install new ones, forcing the government to resort to alternative but less efficient ways to supply electricity to affected areas in Meduguri. And uh, Ali, you noted that when uh, this gets tampered uh, with repairs, uh, repairs can be done in a day or two, unlike the bigger one, which makes takes weeks or months to restore uh, because it's in the bush. So looking at this, uh, the federal government are now giving excuses for uh, why uh, we see, you know, epileptic power supply and, of course, uh, uh, greed collapsing uh, because uh, the bandits and terrorists have actually taken control of certain areas, thereby uh, vandalizing uh, the properties of the transmission company of Nigeria. And that is why we are not seeing power uh, now in the country. Okay, in as much as um, terrorists are vandalizing some of um, um, tampering with power supply, what are the things that they have actually put in place to actually put all of this to an end? It's not just coming out to give statements. It's all about giving solution. So you're just, you two, you're trying to, you, you, in as, you, you, he himself has actually failed also. Because what step have you put in place to actually stop all of this? Because it's not just coming outside to tell us that, yes, um, terrorists, yes, good and fine, they might be doing all of that but what measures have you actually put in place to actually stop all of this you are now even saying that some villages you guys cannot reach because they are terrorists so you you see that they, they are actually aware of the issue of insecurity in every part of the country at the moment but i just do not know why we are not taking proactive steps to actually put all of this to rest why we are actually not putting all of this imagine if you're going to some of these villages deploy troops there if you must because it is important that we have power it is important that there is life Light because light help a lot of businesses. Light it would also help the economy grow also. So deploy troops to each of these local government um, government areas or empower people in this local government like the vigilante. Empower them. Let them understand that these people cannot because in as much as he's saying that terrorists are destroyed, people are seeing them do this and they are not saying anything about it. Make sure you have people there that are giving you intelligence reports. People are giving you reports in, on, on what is actually happening in that environment when it comes to. Um, the issue of um, tampering with the grid of um, power supply. So I, I, I feel that there are a lot of options we have not explored in this country if we actually want to deal with the issue of insecurity. I feel we should start looking at our options. We should start weighing our options. What can we actually do? Enough of the statement, statement, statement. We want to see solutions. We want to see that uh, uh, um, we, we want to see actions. We are tired of you just coming up with statements and no solutions. And talking about, uh, you know, solutions and all of that on this day uh, irabo uh, is quoted saying nigeria's security problem uh, requires political solution a uh, chief of defense staff uh, general loki irabo says nigeria's security challenge needs sound political solution irabo said this on morning show uh, of a rice uh, you know channel i assured that with nigerians working alongside uh, the security agencies, the 2023 elections would be peaceful. Uh, Irabo stated that uh, he would like to assure Nigerians that the election in 2023 will be conducted under a secure atmosphere. And on the Niger Delta situation, Irabo said a combination of operations by the Nigerian Air Force and other security agencies had contributed to addressing the issues of insecurity in that particular region. So, uh, Irabo have actually said, despite all the action, the groundwork they are doing, 
power. Security problem as a nation uh, requires political uh, solution. Remember, it's at several occasions or on several occasions, uh, we've heard uh, people say, uh, you know, the government requires the political will to address the issue of insecurity. That if uh, the government of the day uh, seizes or deems it fit to address this issue, uh, it will be done once and for all. Yeah, I would be agreeing with Ira, but it's looking like um, um, in as much as we are calling on the military or we are calling on the armed forces to actually come to our aid, they actually report to someone. They need instruction before they can carry out operation. So I feel that if the government actually have the political will to actually put all of this to a rest, we'd actually see an end to in the issue of insecurity. Like I said, it's looking like we are not taking it's not we are not taking it very seriously because. I'm still expecting a statement from either the, the office of the president or probably the House of Representatives to actually come to the aid of Zamfara State Governor or the state where insecurity are, is bedeviling them at the moment. But we've not seen all of this happening. It's looking like, and we, like I said, we have not explored all of our options yet. We have, uh, our military is properly funded. We have seen the huge amount of money that goes into the military, that goes into the armed forces. We, I, I, I feel that if each, uh, the, armed for, um, the army, the navy, the air force, um, 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 the D, um, DSS, and even the police, they come together on a joint operation to uh, like man the activities of each, um, of each state that is bedeviling with, um, uh, uh, with insecurity, would actually see results. But we are not hearing instructions. We are not hearing them, giving them access to, okay, oh, go to this particular forest to wipe them out. Like They need instructions to actually go face on with this terror because they cannot act independently on their own. So until we have a political will, until we are ready to actually deal, because as it, we have the equipment, we have these things to actually f deal with these uh, um, terrorists. But I do not know why it's looking like we're taking it with cleats glove. We're not taking it seriously. So I feel that until there is a political will, until the government comes to the realization that people are dying every day, people are not settled in their hometown. We are having a lot of people on a daily basis being um, displaced. We are having the internet displaced people every day. So I feel until there is a political will, we would not see an end to insecurity. Okay, anyway, it's time for us to open the phone lines and get your reactions on the headlines this morning. Uh, to be a part of the show, uh, you can call in to uh, the studio numbers or you can actually drop a message on WhatsApp. Uh, if you are, we are also transmitting live on TSTV. If you have a TSTV decoder, you can watch us live on channel 101. And the numbers are on the screen of which you can actually take it there and call in to be a part of the show. We are also streaming live on our Facebook page, our Bright FM Abuja Bright FM Abuja is the Facebook page. Join us live and drop your comments as well. The WhatsApp number is 70 0703372831307033 070-33-72-8313. The number I just called is strictly for WhatsApp messages and to call into the studio the number is 081-30111724. 081 one 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 seven two four that is the number to call to be a part of the show this morning uh good morning welcome to bright republic hello good morning uh sorry about that uh apologies uh, we lost that call please do well to call us right back zero eight one three zero one 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 seven two four zero eight one three zero one 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 a seven two four that is the call number they send us a message on whatsapp zero seven zero three three seven two eight three one three zero seven zero three three seven two eight three one three is the whatsapp number good morning to you hello good morning yeah, good morning yes good morning eric thank you for having me and good morning to your colleague good morning to you thank you thank you uh, Simeon, TDP, uh, Wiki, and Autumn. Uh, in 2015, TDP lost election to APC as a result of this kind of um, 19 versus, uh, uh, 3 versus uh, 19, 16 rather. That was the slogan in 2015 when some governors 
voted for Amechi to be the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum. And both of Jonathan rejected Amechi, endorsed the former governor of my state, uh, Jonathan, as the, gov as the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum. That was what led to the protest of some PDP governors that let us pull out of PDP to galvanize with APC and the defeated PDP. Here we are in 20, going to 2023. PDP again have never learned a lesson of imposition, of rejection of what they claim they are practicing as a democracy. They keep on doing it again. That 14, three rather, are now greater than 14. They have never learned a lesson of uh, three greater than 16 in 2016. They are here, we are again. So that has been the problem of PDP. You people set up a committee. If you don't have an, 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 um, uh, anything to do with that committee, it shouldn't have been set up in the first place. A committee was set up, and they even made their own voting. And the voting favors which uh, who has contributed so much to the growth of PDP. But all of a sudden, you tell us that you did not take him because he talked anyhow, that he, his temperament is something. So why did you set up a committee? You would have just picked somebody to, to deputize you as a, a DC. Anyway, the downfall of PDP and APC is to my own favor of Peter Obi. So let all of them crash so that Peter Obi will emerge for me. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, anyway, you say the downfall of the PDP and the APC is to your own favor. Okay. If you say so, uh, 08130111724. Good morning. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good morning, okay. Yes, please. I don't want to complain about this in your studio. It seems like another studio is uh, overshadowing people. We cannot hear you people very well. Your okay. studio is just somehow now. Okay, you know okay. That? Turn down the volume of your radio set first. Turn down the volume. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. What location are you at at the moment? I'm, I'm here now. I'm in Wuse Market, but the, the channel is not clear. Okay. Some place, when you drive to some place, it will be clear. Another, when you get to another place, it will be, you know, wavy. You cannot, people can, I cannot hear you people very well. Okay, uh, our engineers work will it. work on it as soon as possible. Thank, Thank you. you. And okay, anyway, I just want to react on the issue of federal government telling us that because of bandits, we cannot have light anymore. A whole Nigerian. Eh? Terrorists have taken over. That's what we have been saying. See, these people are coming with full force. But when we say something, they will say, no, we should not say something. That our government are on top, top of the game. That we will bring them to book. That book up to now is not, is not full. If you go to North now, millions of children are not going to school anymore. They, are, they have achieved their aim in the North. Now they are coming to attack our life so that everywhere will be dark in the night so that they will have that opportunity to attack people and destroy people's lives. And we have a, a sitting gov, gov, uh, government. See, when the worst thing is that even if they are racist guys, they will still release them. So you cannot take them to court so that court will decide that say, the way you are taking it from the cattle to court. See, you cannot rule a nation with double standards. You see, if you are if you, you are not ruling a nation with justice and equity, the nation is not going anywhere. These guys are spread everywhere. And they are not invisible. They are human beings like us. So why can't the government go after these guys and deal with them and bring them to book? Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, uh, you're asking that the government should bring this uh, bandit or terrorist uh, to book as uh, they have been uh, said to be the reason why uh, we see a great collapse and the reason for the epileptic power supply in the country at the moment. 08130 Good morning to you. Hello. Good morning. Kindly turn down the volume of your radio or TV set. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning. You're welcome. Yeah, my name is Austin from Maraba. Austin. Yeah, although you are still in Maraba, yeah, is I think it's a little bit clear in Maraba, in Maraba side. Okay, thank um, you, thank you. Austin. Yeah, you know it's clear, it's clear, but it's clear in Maraba. Maybe some part is like it happened like that. Oh, okay. So I have to check on this. Thank um, you. Um, my brother, you see, you see, politics. You see, you know politics, but right? if you don't have my canonical politics in this country, are you hearing? For mm. I know, I know that Wuke, Wuke is my man, and Wuke have done a lot in PDP. Everybody know. And who is the person who stands in everything? Well, I know. But sometimes, you know, every candidate, whether APC or PDP, of, of a presidential candidate, 
they have their guy because it's not in the law book. They have what they will know who and they will know what they're going to choose. Are you remember? But in, in that case, for what I blame people that these things they have to come together, bring with it together, blow a call, in order if they are trained. They have to talk with themselves, not to then to go and set a committee. Then they will vote. You know that this committee they set that you know, uh, that uh, that they set. Like um, the goal of uh, Ben Wete is saying that uh, that we get that meeting to combat obesity. Sometimes he may even vote because of that favor that uh, we get it to him. But 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 not to know the consequence that is going to happen if they definitely win the election. Are you remember? So some of them they will vote because uh, oh we can have helped me this or that. But the other hand, we have to be very very careful. Even the vice, uh, 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 even the presidential candidate, they have to be very very careful. to choose who if they are going to do that. You know, they are going to work with him. Are you remember? They are going to work with him. They will not be crazy in that party. So what I, 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 I my advice to be is that you call yourself together. I think we should go if the candidate of the PTV guys. Let them go and consult and bring them together. It's number one, you should go to go to Wiki. You should go to visit all the governors. Okay, see what happened yesterday. And nobody called only one governor. So it is showed them a clear hand that this that no, that is not where. So they should call themselves together and make and resolve all their problems. If they are deadly or are they are blind that 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 um, uh, to the that, uh, that uh, they are going to win. So they come together and work as a brother and the governor and achieve their goal. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Austin, for your submission. Trying to, uh, you're trying to prefer solution for the prices rocking the PDP at uh, this time. Good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, yes, Simon. Good morning, Olaji Day. Good morning, Bright FM crew. Good morning, Nigeria. My name is Olaji Day. Simon, see. There is no diminishing return. We were told that one where we are in secondary school. Do you know where TDP got it wrong? The day they sold their presidency to the North, that is the day they got it wrong. Mm-hmm. There is a written constitution, on written, and on a written agreement that North, South, North, South, North, South. And nobody can tell us, even in Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari is from the north, especially northwest. He is about to finish in eight years. And don't forget the agreement between the even the PDP is that the power is going back to the south. That was how the southern governors met in Edo. Uh, they met in Akwaibom. All of them agree that the power is coming back to the south. But I do not know how they got it. They, because they believe Atiku is from the north, that the north will fight for him. That was the greatest mistake they made in giving him that ticket. And see what is happening now. The, 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 the autumn that is now singing like canary, they have been seeing what is going on, that everybody is now supporting the southern presidency. They don't want to be left behind. That's why you see every one of them is singing the song they are singing now. On weekend, at least the man deserves that ticket. If they want to, can you imagine if ticket got that ticket now? Struggling out against Nubu, how how clear contested will it be? For they get it to Atiku that they know that they not are taking good eight years. That is why you see the internal angling within themselves is happening. But I wish them good luck. We go help them. God bless Nigeria. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, you're saying uh, at this point, you know, taking us through history and telling us at what point the PDP uh, got it all wrong. Good morning to you. Hello, Hello good, morning. good morning. Yes, good morning. Yeah, my name is Friday, calling from Cuba. So uh, happy new day. Oh, uh, welcome, Friday. Oh, yeah, God bless you, my brother. You see, nothing good come easy. You see, what has happened to PDP now? PDP. That is, they believe that Paris will be okay. Because they, 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 they are the party always. No way that the other party the way to go. Because the people are supposed to even lead, lead the lead other party now. It's supposed to be APC. By showing by the by example, they're from the for primary election to everything. But people always do it fair before another party always follow. Now they are having everything, right? They have um, uh, um, their president, their, their, their president, their, their, their candidate, and uh, their five president. 
Well, other party, they may be giving cash, they feel that they feel that they receive the time and for promotion to get. And if you know, be safe, or be all these days, if it's raised, they can maybe even bring and the best going to be a five percent there for tomorrow. So, the way it's happened is this. I believe that we get everything right because all the state where PDP is wrong, they are doing well. In Akwa Ibom, in Bayesa, they are in the Delta. So the way they get wrong. So they are the way they sold the two. So I believe in 2023, even though they are going to be everybody, they vote their own. They are about to vote their own, they vote their own, and they are not vote their own, and still going to win. So thank you, God bless you. Okay, you're saying that they're not vote their own, it's vote their own. Uh, remember, for you to even win, you have to have a particular spread across uh, the 36 states of the Federal uh, Republic and, of course, the capital as well. So if you do by voting on your regions and your zones, uh, you might not actually have that spread. Or well, 08130 081-30-111-724. That is the number to call to be a part of the show this morning. I remember you can also drop a message on WhatsApp. The WhatsApp number is 70 3372 Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Amy White from Cuba. Uh, White, Amy White, welcome. Um, I want to talk about the online of uh, Wiki and the, the past. Can you hear me? Yes, we can Hello. hear you. Go ahead. So, um, it's uh, the right thing for Wiki to remain silent because um, many people, politicians in South, they, they play based on sentiment. Understand? They don't they don't, they don't value the way they play politics just for their own pocket. They don't because it's supposed to zone that thing to the south. So because I can't, the, the God are not to be blamed because they should blame themselves now, present now. Because the way they think, wicked things is not like the way others in south think. So in foreign and PDP. So, I think it's the best thing for PDP because they always come out with mistakes. So when they make mistakes, they will they will drop, they will they will lose the election. So that is my own. Okay, thank you so much, Amy White, for your submission. The WhatsApp number again is zero seven zero three three seven two eight three one three. WhatsApp is zero seven zero three three seven two eight three one three, and the call number is zero eight one three zero one 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 seven two four. Good morning. Hello, good morning. My yes. name is Abaka from Cuba. Abubaka, welcome. Yes, I just want to comment on this PDP issue. You see, this is the second mistake. The first mistake was 2015, when Jonathan contested that election. I remember Buhari uh, just said, no, don't go. That is the turn of the north. He said he must go. So... In PDP lost to APC. That is why APC came to power. Ali Bin, do not hear the advice of the leader of the party, give it to the North, they could have still be in power. That is first mistake. Second mistake is this one now. I was expecting them to give this power to the South because it's their turn. Which we came supposed to have taken that ticket. But something happened along the line, line uh, to go to the governor. Mm, that is policy anyway. They gave it back to Atiku. I knew quite a while that these people are falling to the pit again. Mistake number two. There's no way they can win 2020 election. So it's very clear that APC is taking this thing off. No, no, nothing will happen. It's APC time. Because they got it right. They gave it to the South. So you can see, I know there will be crisis. Even though PDP gave the this thing to Wiki as advice, there's no way they could even make any error to it. So that is on that. Then we come to this power issue. When these people are telling about terrorists, is if you go to the south, there is no electricity. You go to the uh, southwest, southeast, there is no electricity. Are they disabled destroying their power uh, line there? It's not something is wrong. These people are not capable. I remember the time Oshomole was in power. He told the Jonathan, "Don't say this thing to this private individual. Say this thing to state. Break this 
monopoly of Fedra, when you say national grid, make it state. Every state sell it to a state there so that you generate their power. This thing could have not been there now. This thing that is causing this problem is because it's national. So unless this thing is taken back to state, there will be no power in Nigeria. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Abu Bakr, for your submission. Uh, quickly, let me take this message before I get back to the calls. It says, Wiki and Okowa's camp would resolve their internal crisis or misunderstanding. Uh, it depends on the final decision of Wiki to stay with the PDP or defect to another party. On Farishé, saying it is now time for the Southern President. Where was Farishé when delegates elected Atuko as the PDP presidential candidate? Was it when Wiki was dropped for Okowa? Then Farishé woke up from his slumber to say it is time for Southern Presidents. Uh, according to the political calculation of the PDP, it was a former president, Gulag Jonathan, that did it last on the PDP, and he is from the South. Good morning. Anyway, thank you so much for your message. Good morning to you right back. Uh, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, uh, we will take two more calls and then wrap things up on the show this morning. Thank you. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the all-new High Definition TSTV, Africa's digital satellite television provider. With more than 100 channels covering every aspect of life, TSTV offers viewing pleasure at all times for all demographics. Catch world-class sports, music, movies, news, children's, educational, religious, documentary, reality TV channels, and so much more on TSTV. It's all in high definition. For as little as two naira, you can watch what you want, when you want, on our special bouquets, a la carte, PSU Go, and pay-per-view. Our TSTV rollout channels are available all over Nigeria and in most African countries. To be part of this viewing experience, pick up your TSTV decoders, accessories, and preloaded vouchers from our dealer shops nationwide at unbelievably affordable prices. For more information, download the TSTV app on Apple Store and Google Play Store. You can check out our website, www.tstvafrica.com, or hit us up at TSTV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or call 0990-40990. Telecom Satellite Television, TSTV, connecting your world. It's one thing to work for money and it is a totally different ball game to make your money work for you. Join Ajay Franklin, a smart investor, real estate guru and entrepreneur par excellence as he takes you on an exciting journey on how to invest in a smart way on The Smart Investor's Guide. Every Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 98.7 Bright FM. Get your money working for you in a smart way. I am here since three days ago. Like corruption can happen at any way. Hey, corrupt with petrol. I prevent it with not a lot of corruption with petrol. I just see them for hotel, I just see them for markets. And if you see them, you go know. They say you get them, then they embalm yourself, but me, I never go to that round place before. Let's discuss the headlines and politics. Going by the Senate standing orders of 2011 as amended, which is the genuine and the authentic because it has never. And it protects. Will you shut up? Get involved. Air your opinions. She has your mind. In this republic, we don't turn off your mic. Join us on Bright Republic, weekdays, 8 a.m. You're welcome back and thank you for staying with us right here on Bright Republic. As we go through some of the headlines this morning, uh, we'll just take one or two more calls and then uh, it's a buy from us. 081-30-111-724. 081-30-111-724. Uh, that is the number to call to be a part of the show. If you're watching us on TSTV channel 101, the numbers are on your screen right now. I remember you can also join the stream via Facebook. On Facebook, it is at Bright FM Abuja. Uh, that is the Facebook handle. Join us, join the stream, and you can drop your comments there as well. And you can also uh download the bright fm mobile app on google play store and you can join the conversation as well right there the whatsapp number is 070-3372-8313 and the call number is 081-30-111-724 081-30-111-724 anyway before we get back to the calls let me talk about quickly 
Uh, I actually saw a particular headline and on the Daily Sun newspaper uh, where the headline actually uh, says uh, EFCC to landlord uh, ignorance being uneducated not an excuse to give out houses to yahoo boys i saw the headline and i felt i should just bring it up uh, right now on the headline on nigerian tribune it says afcc to landlords ignorance being uneducated not an excuse to give out houses to yahoo boys uh, the economic and financial crimes commission on wednesday told landlords caretakers that ignores uh, that ignorance being uneducated is not an excuse uh, in implementing the law against the use of their premises for fraud uh, which is known as yahoo yahoo or other criminal activities and speaking during the twitter engagement on wednesday evening officials of the efcc said the onus was on landlords to do due diligence uh, do a background check of their prospective customers ask basic documents and verify the particulars they are given and uh, the deputy director of legal and prosecution silvanus tahir an assistant director of legal and prosecution, Cosmos Ugu, who led the conversation, said it was in the collective interest of landlords, caretakers to do due diligence, else they would fall guilty of extant laws. And talking about the extant laws that uh, they might fall guilty to if uh, they are found uh, culpable of this. And according to uh, the EFCC, uh, they explained that uh, the provision of Section 3 of the Advanced Free Fraud and other fraud related offenses act of 2006 stipulates that a person who being the occupier or is concerned in the management of any premises or causes or knowingly permits the premises to be used for any purpose which constitutes an offense under this act is guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to imprisonment for a term of not less than five years without the option of a fine so uh, landlords should now be asking you uh, in the forms when you want to, uh, you know, rent, uh, you know, their property or they want to lease it out to you. Uh, they will actually put it as one of the questions on the questionnaire uh, that are you a yahoo yahoo boy or are you into internet fraud uh, before even, they give that, that to you. Does that even make any sense? Even if you ask me that, am I a yahoo 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 This I is in the law. So, it's, it's, so it's, now, it's now that they, they, they actually are awake to that particular section, that extant law that says that creates provision for all of this. For me, I don't, I, I, for me, it doesn't even make sense. And for me, I don't see how they would be able to monitor it. I come to you, I want to rent house. You ask me, what am I doing? I say I'm a business owner. You say I should i should prove to you i should you want to see where i'm doing business i can do all of that I can take you there and i can still be running that particular thing in my house and you might not know you may not find out so how do you now check and balance all of this if i'm in my house i go to my business i go out but i'm still a yahoo yahoo person how do you actually business check all person of this? in the day yahoo yahoo person at, at in night. night so it, like it doesn't I, I feel that all of this maybe intelligence guardian will help them actually um catch up but it has been said if you were into internet fraud you know for some people it is conspicuous people can't actually tell uh, if you are into that kind of business but for you need to understand some people that are that so looking now especially in this abuja they are here but we don't see them make noise they don't they are not as loud as people that in lagos anyway we, we, we've seen a lot of people going by this if this is done you know a huge question uh will be raised these days we see police officers uh we lane young men asking them to uh provide uh, their phone unlock it and let them go through it and all of that uh we have people who actually work because uh how they actually get to suspect people is uh if you're always working remotely you are always indoor uh if these days when there's no power you're generating is on your on your system and all of that now the question is how will you know who is into internet fraud and how will you know someone who is working remotely there are people who are social media managers there are people who are digital marketers and all the, the work from is from the comfort of their home pressing their system all day because that is their their workshop their workspace and, and all of that so I how do you know how do and they, in how some they... crimes even though cryptocurrencies have been banned in the country but we still know that there are certain people who are still into this yeah, and they are always pressing their yeah. system and all of that and everything so how do you know who uh, is into Yahoo Yahoo and how do you know uh, is it that way you drive white bands and you are always pressing computer and you have friends who are probably have dreadlocks and all of that and you throw parties 
I feel I feel these guys. I feel these guys now are even smart. How will the landlords and caretakers even even know know uh, this person? Uh, That's why I said at the end of the day, still goes to say, how do you check and balance all of this? Because you cannot just come up with a law and say uh, the landlord will be um, is also guilty of harboring such people in his house. You come to me that you want um, accommodation. I give it to you. You provide where you are working and all of that. So I feel that at the end of this, it's still intelligence gathering and um, intelligence intel that would actually still help the EFCC um, actually catch some of this corporate because these guys are now even smart. Some of them do not even blow their trumpet anymore. Especially in this Abuja, in the city of Abuja, you may be one, I may not know. You may come to work in the morning and go back at night and do what you want to do. So how would they, like you act, how would they be able to actually know that who is who? So at the end of the day, it still boils down to intelligence intel. That's it. But saying that landlords will be held accountable for happening, I feel it doesn't even make sense. And that particular, that extent law should be uh, should be actually be taken uh, out in the, in the first place. Okay, anyway, uh, it's time for us to go right now. Thank you so much for being a part of Brett Republic today. Definitely tomorrow, we will be right back to the of course, some of the trending headlines. Uh, Tim Dokba Lagushi is the voice you've been hearing. And of course, my name is Simon Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your morning and have a good day.